All right, in this video, I'm going to walk through construction of a sources and uses of fund statement, which is essentially similar to the uh, statement of cash flows, except that we don't have access to all the information, the internal information that the company would have uh, if they were constructing their statement of cash flows. But we can estimate one by looking at a firm's balance sheet and income statement. All right, so our sources and uses of fund statement starts with beginning cash. And then it looks at changes in the balance sheet that, uh, that cause the cash account to change. All right, for example, if we look over here, accounts receivable was $120,000 at the end of last year. At the end of this year, it's $163,000. So we must have spent some money on accounts receivable. We had inventory of 240000 at the beginning of this year, end of last year, beginning of this year. Now it's only $195,000, which, which means we sold more inventory than we replaced. All right, those are cash flows. Now we split the cash flows into three major categories. Cash flow from operating activities, and that's basically the income statement and changes in working capital, current assets, and current liabilities used in the business. We also have cash flows from investing activities, and those are changes in long term assets and with this particular, uh, and in some instances, there's also short-term investments, but we don't have that here. So we'd just be looking at the purchases of gross property, plant, and equipment, or sale of property, plant, and equipment. And then the third category is cash flow from financing activities. Financing activities are changes in the long-term liabilities, and in the equity accounts, the capital that's used to fund the firm. All right, so if we're going to set up a cash flow statement, the first thing that we start with in cash flow from operating activities is always net income and then add back any non-cash expenses. And the largest non-cash expense for most firms is going to be depreciation. So for the cash flow for 2000X2, which is the year we're going to be working with, we're going to start with cash flow, the amount of cash that the firm had at the end of the prior year. End of the prior year is the same as beginning of 2000X2. All right, so he started with 25,000, ended with 15, and we're going to try and figure out why. All right, so first thing we do is add back the net income, and the only non-cash expense on this particular income statement is the depreciation expenses. All right, we didn't actually pay anybody depreciation expenses, so that's why we're adding it back. It means that the It means that the net income doesn't actually represent the cash that came into the firm. And that's what we're trying to measure is cash into the firm. And now we have changes in working capital accounts. Change in accounts receivable. Change in inventory. Change in prepaid expenses. Those are the three current asset accounts. If we go over here and look at the current liabilities, we have accounts payable, accrued salaries, and there's notes payable. Notes payable is an interest-bearing account, so it's actually a financing activity. So the only two that we're going to have are these, the change in Accounts payable and the change in accrued 
salaries. All right. So anytime that you have an asset increase, it's a decrease in cash. For instance, the accounts receivable went up by $43,000. Now what happened was that I took the beginning accounts receivable and then I added new credit sales and then I would have subtracted collections on credit sales and that would have given me the ending accounts receivable for the year. Alright, I don't know how much was credit sales, but I do know that the collections on credit sales were 43000 less than the creation of credit sales. Alright, so the beginning accounts receivable The beginning of the year was 120,000. I know at the end of the year it was 163,000. Let's just assume all credit sales are made, all sales are made on credit. Then I could actually figure out what the collections would be, and it actually be that minus 43,000 dollars. Okay, so that if I took beginning plus the new credit sales minus the ending that's how I got my new accounts receivable since this is a cash outflow and this is a cash inflow more money flowed out than came in alright but easy to remember that anytime an account an asset account goes up cash goes down by the same token, any time a an account an asset account goes down, cash went up because you sold off more inventory than you replaced. And we have this the same thing with the prepaid expenses. Uh, we didn't replace the prepaid expenses as fast as we used them up, so that created some cash. The accounts payable went from 65000 to 157000 Anytime a liability goes up, that's a positive cash flow. So, change in accounts payable and change in accrued salaries and that is the total cash flow from operating activities for the year. So this firm generated $311,000 in operating activities. The investing activities change in gross property, plant, and equipment. And that's the only long-term asset I'm showing over here. Notice that the change in accumulated depreciation, which is 64000 rather, that already got lumped up into here. So we're only looking at the change in the gross property, plant, and equipment. The depreciation, how much of the equipment we used up, that's an operating activity. All right, so I only have the one account. It was 381000 now it's five hundred and sixty-five thousand. I must have spent one hundred eighty-four thousand dollars buying new property, plant, and equipment. All right, the cash flow from operating, uh, operating and investing, those are done. So now I need financing activities, and the first one, change in notes payable. Alright, so my notes payable went from 34000 to 64000 That would be an increase of $31,000. The 
that somebody lent me. The long-term debt, on the other hand, went from 185000 down to 145000 So the long-term debt actually got paid off. The other long-term liabilities had a minor, uh, a minor drop. Okay, so there's the changes in my long-term liabilities and my interest-bearing short-term liabilities. The common stock firm issued $2,000 of common stock. And that's fairly common to have little minor accounts like that go up because often uh, that's the firm paying employees with shares of stock. So it's not that unusual to see that go up some. The paid-in capital went up by the same amount. Now, retained earnings went up, but we've already reported the net income up here as an operating activity. So the retained earnings went up by only $13,000, went from one hundred and five to one hundred and eighteen, dollars even though we earned net income of $134,000. So retained earnings is the sum of all that net income ever earned, ever, minus the sum of all the dividends paid ever. So when we look and see that it changed, it went up by $13,000. If we didn't pay any dividends, it would have gone up by $134,000. So what happened here is they must have paid a dividend of that minus that is how much it went up. Minus that will give us that the amount of the dividend. 105000 plus 134000 would have given you 239000 if they paid no dividends. Since this isn't 239000 the difference is the amount of dividends that they actually paid was 121000 All right, the Treasury stock went up or got negative or so that means that this firm bought back 10,000 shares, $10,000 worth of shares. So if we go to the, the subtotal of cash flow from financing, And what we can see here is that grand total from that was $137,000. So the ending cash should have been the amount we started with, the 311 we made from here, So we started with 25,000. We made 311 from our operating activities, spent 184,000 on property, plant and equipment, and we paid big dividends and paid off some of our long-term debt and ended up with 15,000 in the checking account. So we know it balances because that number is equal to that number. All right? So we balanced it uh, what does it actually mean? Well, here's a firm that went and bought a bunch of property, plant, and equipment and paid a bunch of dividends to shareholders and paid off some debt 
And where did they get the money to do it? Mainly from their operating activities. But what what actually came in from operating? The they their inventory went up, went down, and their accounts receivable went up. A big change is the accounts payable went up by almost a hundred thousand dollars. That's usually not such a good sign, but it's something that would take monitoring. You're paying off the long-term debt and replacing it with accounts payable. That's usually something that'll make bankers kind of nervous. So this is an account that we would continue to monitor and see does that continue in the future.